if we can work well. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you, everyone. So I would like to get started acknowledging the collective work that we did to get here today and be presenting this to you, our experience working collectively on thinking about hydro uh, planning and licensing of hydroelectric dams in the, in the Amazon. And specifically, our talk today has to do with social participation, dams, and development in the Amazon. What to do is a question. And it's also the collective paper that we have been working previously to the meeting. We have been working on a collective paper and a collection of case studies. And the group that has been involved in this initiative is, is much bigger than the four of us that are presenting today. And I wanted to acknowledge them as well as the institutions that have supported their participation in this effort. Uh, so I want to mention that, unfortunately, Anna Christina Barros from TNC, the Nature Conservancy, who is uh, also leading and is leading the, the collective paper that we wrote, uh, unfortunately, cannot be here with us. She had, she had an issue with uh, illness in the family, and she apologized to all of us for not being here, but hopefully in the future she'll be, she'll be back together with us working on this um, effort. And so we have also Angela Livino from uh, EPE, the Brazilian uh, Research Energy, uh, the government. Uh, we have Uberatan Cazeta, who is here from the Public Prosecution Service, the Federal Pro Public Prosecution Service in Brazil, EPEF. Um, Ciro Campos from Instituto Socioambiental. And then I also would like that people will stand up, as I call them, people that have been involved in this effort. Uh, Danielle Pochetti, the student that also has organized the collective case studies. Thank you, Danielle. <laughs> Adila Lima. Adila is an exchange doctoral student from Federal University of Tocantins, and she has worked in the Tocantins River. She's here with, uh, with support from Capes. Carolina Doria is not here, but she's a professor at Federal University of Pondonia, and she has worked with fisheries and also is one of the leaders of the Amazon Dental Network in Pondonia. Aide Moser Luis, please stand up, Aide. She's from the State Public Prosecution Service in Pondonia, and we also really want to acknowledge the State Public Prosecution of Pondonia that supported Aide's participation here in this meeting. So thank you very much also for the uh, State Public as well, Pondonia for helping us. Uh, Paula Moreira also cannot be here. She, she's a collaborator in the Amazon Dev Network and she's currently at Unicampi and also participant of the JT Infrastructure, the JT Infrastructure. Um, Eline G. Marquez, a professor at Federal University of Tocantins, also advisor of Agila and one of the leaders of the Amazon Dev Network at UFT, Federal University of Tocantins. Evandro Moreto is advisor of Danielle and is from USP, also cannot be here, but studying the socioeconomic impacts of hydroelectric dams in Brazil in general, and also in the Amazon. And our only Bolivian person that I want to acknowledge that we have captured to this panel, uh, Marlisa Arteaga Gomez Garcia, who is also has helped a lot in the organization of the event and is working on bi-national dams between Brazil and Bolivia. So with that, uh, our presentation also, I want to just highlight that the collective paper and the collection of case studies informing our, uh, our panel is available on your um, pen drive that you got also uh, online in the TCD website. Uh, we have this presentation organized in uh, three parts. Uh, the, the first part is this one that I already started that's telling you who we are. Um, is this just, how do I move to this? Yeah. So we have in three parts, as, as I was saying. First of all, we want to tell you who we are, what have we been doing a little bit, and then Angela is gonna uh, come and tell us why do we need to talk about this? Um, why do we need to rethink the practices of the planning process and maybe how and what strategies and tools could we use to do that together? Uh, we go on, then Obirata is going to talk about our theory of change. We're going to talk about public participation, objectives, principles, 
and also giving us some input and some examples of lessons learned from case studies and from our experience with the existing dams that we have. And then Cyril is going to conclude with final remarks. Also, I want to mention that we were talking about water, we we're talking about how water connects people and connects forests and connects livelihoods and provides livelihoods. So this is also a panel about water, forest, and people, which was the first name of our Amazon Net Network when we started. We had a research group that was named um, Water, uh, Forest, and People. And we, as, as a group in the Amazon Net Network, This is, this is a joint effort between multiple institutions uh, and the Amazon Dev Network is hosted here in the University of Florida in the TCD program. It's kind of a nested uh, institutional structure we have. Uh, we also collaborate with um, universities in Brazil and one of the objectives is really to strengthen that local capacity of Brazilian universities to work collaboratively uh, across watersheds and we see that researchers are not communicating with each other a lot, also are not communicating with stakeholders and vice versa. So we want to be a platform to provide a dialogue, to provide that communication across watersheds and across stakeholders. It's kind of a transdisciplinary really effort for co-production of knowledge. We are establishing a community of learning. We also have other people involved, our other leaders here, uh, they are involved in this initiative, in this international initiative as well as people from the government and uh, we are very happy to have also the public prosecution service as a collaborator in this effort. So talking about uh, studying the, the environment and the landscape at the watershed level, so we're struggling to do that uh, and with your help I think we can advance on this issue. So please take your notes as, as we talk and explain our approach and uh, as we share our experience and we want, we're eager to hear from you. Uh, okay, thank you. So let me pass by to Angela Lino now, from Epic. Thank you, Simone. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I would just uh, continue, just to reinforce what Simone said, we had the Amazon Dance Network, what we've been doing, and we have the GT infrastructure, that it's a, it's a group that has been working together, both from the side of government and also NGOs. And, and here it is, as Simone said, the white paper that we've been working, and the case studies that we, as she mentioned, that we have uh, from Tocantins, the Calcutta Tocantins River case, and we have Madeira River and Xingu River. They are very good uh, work that people have been, uh, it, it brings uh, all the experience related with the licensed dams in that river. So let's talk about the, why do we need to discuss that? And just a quick uh, disclaimer, <laughs> yeah, just a quick disclaimer. As Simone said, it's a multidisciplinary uh, network and I'm part of, uh, I, uh, the first of all, I want to thank the University of Florida, the Amazon Network for being invited to be here. It's very good to be here. Uh, but also I have to say that as, as a, an employment, as a government, uh, I, I need to, to say that we, we really want to, to uh, be part of this initiative, but it's important to say that not part of this presentation is a formal recommendation or consulting service from the PA. It's just a reminder. <laughs> so, continue about why do you need to discuss that? I think it is. I just bring some numbers and some uh, studies from the recent latest 10 year energy expansion plan, uh, PDE uh, 2026. Uh, it's a Brazilian document that is provided by EPE and also Ministry. Uh, of mines and energy. And it's just to remember that Brazil is not a developed country, so we need to grow and, and we need energy for that. But even considering all the conservation plans that we have and all the efficiency uh, service that we've been working, we still need to, for example, to have about 64 gigawatts of installed capacity added to the next 10 years in order to attend the, the increase of demand of energy. 
And also, it's important to point out that we have the commitment that the Brazilian NDC commitment requires to expand our production, our power supply to at least 23% by 2030, including uh, from renewable, including wind, biomass, and solar. We are, for example, in the 10-year energy plan, we are planning uh, about 20 gigawatts of uh, wind in the end of uh, 2000. I think that's more than that. Sorry, guys. Uh, 20 is almost contracted. We, we are thinking about 28 gigawatts of wind installed in 2026 and about 13 gigawatts of solar installed in 2026. But even when you consider this, this amount of uh, renewable uh, we still need hydropower, and, and that commitment implies to have about 65% of hydropower in 2030. And why that? Because if you are adding more renewable, like wind and solar, we need to curb this the energy. So if you don't have hydropower, you might have like uh, fossil fuel plant uh, generation. So this is not what we want, and it's not what we committed in the NDC. So taking that to account, this is, is a map from the 10-year the plan. And we, we can see here in the, the red, the, the, the dark blue dots, we have just three uh, hydropower uh, projected uh, to be installed in the Amazon. Uh, the others, like uh, in the Juruena River, we have already had some operation and uh, operational and all the dots it's the all the, the hydro plant that is already installed in the southeast of Brazil but let's focus on these three hydropower that we have and Benquere, Tabajara and Castanheira and considering this uh, we have here just to finish the to finish this this part that I want to talk yeah, we have here uh, an example of uh, development of a hydropower project. And considering this hydropower life cycle, we started with hydropower potential assessment that we call with the inventory of the potential. And at that time, of, uh, we, we, it's, it's a river uh, basin scale uh, working that you have to decide what will be the best dams and will be the best uh, uh, economic, energetic, and environmental the definition of dams to any the river. So uh, considering that, you have the, the next step, the feasibility studies, considering the final alternative selected in the inventory, you can start a feasibility is a local, it's just one dam project. And, and uh, uh, at the same time, you have the environmental studies and the indigenous studies. And the next, it will be the auction, uh, the energy auction, and when you decide who will be the entrepreneur that you construct and operate the, the dam, and then construction and operation. So, uh, and what is the relation between this life cycle and the planning studies? Uh, we have the, the long-term plan, the, the PNE is along with the 30-year plan, and to, in order to have all the resources that we, we need to have to decide what will be the best in the electric matrix, we pick up some of the hydropower that was selected in the hydropower potential studies. And also in the 10-year plan, this, uh, sorry, this second one, the 10-year plan, consider just the hydropower that is started the feasibility studies that it, that means that it has more chance to be constructed, so it's more uh, uh, solid than the hydropower. So here is a long, long-term study, and here is more like a medium-term uh, uh, study. And I, I point out here that environmental license, the project permit, especially this project permit, uh, has been used as the only space for public participation. And consider that as a consequence, we have been a lot of pressures and we, you know about, for example, uh, Belo Monte Dam, it's, uh, it has been a lot of trouble during the license process and even after the, the, the auction, after the construction, we have here the public uh, audience with a lot of hearing, uh, the public hearing with the policy. So it was a, 
Uh, and not just for Belmont, we've been dealing with these, these struggles in licensing process for a lot of them in Brazil. So we need to rethink our planning process in order to anticipate the public participation. That is something that the government has been working and has been hearing and, and they constructed this dialogue with the NGOs, with the pros public prosecution. All the, 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 I think that we working together, we can improve uh, for the future. Uh, and, then, and then I will be at the Good morning, everyone. I try to be most quickly to, to explain what we are we discussing. Uh, when we talk about public hearing in Brazil, as Angela said, uh, nowadays we are concentrating all the, the this moment only on the licensing and the public hearing, hearing uh, that Ibama or other licensing agencies calls, but. Of course, it's not enough for us, and we have a lot of pressure to, to solve a gap of democracy in Brazil, and the licensing became uh, the magic moment of where all the, 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 the issues became uh, visible to us. We have to, to move this, this, this moment because it's inefficient, it's not the exact moment which we have a lot of trouble uh, to, to do this, where we said, well, you we can see the public hearing in the lane about Belmont was a police moment. Oh, we have a lot of uh, problems with that. Someone, people, uh, it's, it's impossible to be heard and things like that. So we are waiting, we are working with this kind of vision. We have to assure capacity of environmental assessment, associated decision-making process, legitimacy and quality. And you have to, to work with six principles that we, we, we can see in the US. Clarity of purpose, a commitment to use the process to inform the actions, appropriate financial and human resources, appropriate time of decisions, focus on implementation of agreed decisions, and a commitment to self-assessment learning from experience in blood institutional learning. In these six, six principles, we have uh, a lot of problems to, to solve. Uh, class of purpose, we have to decide how to communicate to our society, why we choose this, them, and, or these metrics and not, not other ones, and this is not uh, so, so easy to see in Brazil. We have to to really inform the, the actions. We don't have to insist and do what we are doing. That we just say, "I will do Belmont then. I will do uh, Tapajós then," or things like that. We have to discuss this prior. And of course, when we are talking about uh, indigenous peoples and other traditional peoples. We have to, to consider ILO 169 provisions. We have to be prior consensus. We have to discuss with people and we have to discuss this in their own time, their own language and their own condition to know what we are talking about. And of course, it's not to do on the licensing moment. We have to discuss this before starting the process, before decision makers decides to do uh, a dam and things like that. And this is the most important uh, thing at this moment. We have to understand how to use in Brazil the ILO 169 and the moment that we do. It's, of course, we are talking about planning, we are talking about to <coughs> anticipating this moment to permit that the people, not only the indigenous people, all the society, but especially indigenous peoples and traditional people, to understand it. And there is a, a thing that's almost never uh, said, that we normally tell to the people what the government wants to do, what the preliminary wants to do, and never heard about the people wants to say to entrepreneurs, to say to governors, to understand about our uh, options of dams and things like that. And of course, 
these six principles are under construction in Brazil. It's what you want to are we talk in our paper, what white paper. It's a proposal. It's not what our nowadays we are discussing how to move in the actual moment. Just to 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 point that out, Belomont will have 24 different issues at the judiciary in different moments, and all of them are under discussion until now. But Belomont is just working uh, full to capacity in two years, something like that. So now, Cyril. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for your invitation. Well, we have some opportunities to social participation in this process of building a game, but it's still small and came in late because this is not effective at the ground. And this implementation is problematic in generation, generating social conflicts in education, health, basic sanitation, housing, and also uh, have increased deforestation, loss of biodiversity, cosmic loss to indigenous and indigenous communities. Well, but we have this, this space to dine with. This space must be improved. People, community people, and government must be prepared each other to understand, to talk, and to touch each other because it's not habit in these days. And we have not a lot, a lot of transparency. We must improve this, this transparency, including in the beginning of this process because we are not sure that uh, process is really necessary and is the, the best one. We must, uh, this preparation uh, uh, must begin early, the early territorial participation plan, and we must uh, strengthen the dialogue in two ways, by the communities and government. Uh, we must fight against the corruption and we must uh, get more transparency in this process. But uh, it's not happened. What we are learning today that doesn't matter how beautiful are our plants, how strong are the obligations at the ground, it doesn't happen and we are facing a problem today. Uh, I would like to mark something that Brazilian justice sometimes neutralizes because when the justice, justice say, stop this, this project, the Brazilian government uses a legal instrument called the suspension of security and they are using this more than 20 times in the Shibu and Tapajot Basin. So they ensure the, the works keep going. And even the obligations uh, are not at the ground. So the obligations are the new deadlines, and these deadlines also are not met. And we face in Madeira and Xingu uh, very no situation and the impacts and consequences are so big. And we think this should be as an alert, alert to Brazilian and other governments in their plans to build new dams in the Amazon. Uh, such banker that was so here because banker is two worse than Belmont, ten times smaller, uh, with a half price, price uh, even a bigger flow the area, and it's just fancy. So well, we we finish now. We must work to improve the social participation to make this more effective, but we can't
So yes, that we must look at the grounds, the implementation of these obligations, because the license process is not being respected. So we can't think to keep building without solving this problem, because it's just a beautiful plan. At the ground, it is the solution and lost to society. Thank you.